welcome to the official UNHD YouTube channel. My name is Reverend Eric. I lost all my subscribers. I, I'm not monetized anymore. They, none of them, none of them have approached me as a man yet. Stupid can afflict anybody. Chess, not checkers, moron. I shouldn't attack the bar free. Buckle up. It's gonna get tough. Season three, The Fall from Grace. At the beginning of 2023, a topic of discussion in the attractive community would be if DSP would do an interview. Ultimately, DSP would announce that he was canceling his plans of doing an interview. This would lead to a video of Duty Stream saying he was right, saying he knew that DSP would cancel it. Pastor Eric in the comments would then accuse Duty Streams of plagiarism and stealing his opinion. After some pushback, he would then say he wasn't being serious and then say, Seems you and Phil have something in common. You bite friends for the sake of ego. Bravo, little brother. Bravo. This would seemingly be the final straw for Snow Hogan as he would release a video called When a Detractor Becomes a Locale Beggar Tagging Pastor Eric. The video itself would highlight Pastor Eric's previous callout of detractors and his desperation for members. It would also highlight this moment where Pastor Eric would use Samantha to attack detractors. Hold up. Hold the hell up. I didn't want to forget those bargain bin fluffers who calls themselves detractors. No, not all of you fam. Just the soft boys who took offense to the critical video pointing out fraud ass detractors like them. For those who mentioned me in their corny ass, watered down, swiped down and tap record videos. Great job for having original content for once. Wait, did you get some help? I bet you did. You have absolutely have no skills, no talent, no imagination, and no business without Phil. Know your role and shut your mouth. You can speak with me if you have any grievance, like a man. Stop taking the f-boy way out. So anyway, with joy in my heart, I want to say on behalf of the Sinner's Commentary and the Miller family, eat a dick. Gargle with vaginal cream and for goodness sake, stop your weekly volunteering for prostate examines at the local community college. Just nasty. Eric would release a response video the same day, but in the intro of the video there would be an image saying, shout out to the detractors that ride with me and the channel, including Chill Murray, Snoke Hogan, and Duty Streams, just to name a few. Much love to the community we share and keep our channels alive, you are loved. In the video itself, he would go on a tirade about Snoke Hogan's video. We get a sensitive brother. I mean, really sensitive. I mean, really, really sensitive. Not known for putting out original content. I mean, that that's just another fact. But he called it to make a diss over me telling the truth. And me not naming names is smart. Because if you're guilty of the shit, that means you doing it. This is chess, not checkers. You see, the thing that, that people fail to understand, like this soft brother, you know, God bless him, good luck. You keep you keep copying and pasting, boo-boo. Long as you long as you got Philip, you got an income. And I'm still going to watch his, his program because I ain't got no issue with his program. Never had. Even though stupid can afflict anybody. It don't change how I feel about people. To him, this is personal. To me, this ain't got nothing to do with nothing. Because if he was the, if he was the problem, well, he actually already outed himself. So I guess that's, that kind of owns that one up. And then the, to, and to talk about plagiarism, if he thought I was being serious about writing on duty streams with an LOL, that tells you thought process, not original. You know, I remember when I first called out, uh, in, uh, put, sent some shots out there into the detractor community. I remember when I got, this is when you know that your, it's called semantic infiltration is when you start using words that others have used because you don't have any original thought process 
If you can't speak for yourself, you're going to use what others use, which is popular. Oh, lol cow beggar. Neither thing. How does that even make logical sense? But see, logic ain't part of this. This is all emotional. That's where all this is coming from. It's emotional. I can't believe he called out that. If I never said your name, you shouldn't even put yourself in the hemisphere of that stuff. I'm really sorry that you can't make original content. I'm really sorry that you can't make original content. I'm sorry that if Phil jumped and fell from YouTube today, you'd be dead in the water. I'm sorry. Me, I'll go back to whatever life I had before. If God tells me you're done with Phil, I cut that off and I'm out. That's it. That's the end of the day. YouTube doesn't have a monopoly on me. Never has. And the minute it does, I'm out. Anything stronger than Christ in my life, that thing has got to go. And at this point, it ain't nowhere close. So much love to him. Good job on the original content. Next time, maybe try to use your own vernacular. And let's not forget, you always notice people hiding behind little cartoon faces because they can't face up who they are. Always remember that. It's easy to slang mud when your ass is hiding. Let's see if he'll talk about face to face. I am always willing, always ready. Let's see if he's willing to do that if he's not afraid of Phillips community knowing who he is. Did I just say that? I sure did. I make content because I want to see Philip do better. Maybe, I don't know if I've made that clear or not. I want to see him repent and be clean. That's never changed. I have never changed my mind on that. And after what, after what, and reading the stupidest comment I've ever seen in my life, next to the normal trolls I get that can't stand me in religion, this has got to be the top of stupid about the stuff that you just saw. And to make matters worse, the other four that agreed with them, equally as stupid. Now, why would I say something that harsh? One, it's a fact. One, it's a fact. Why? I'm not in the business of lying. I'm not in the business of telling you what everyone else is saying to make the narrative make you feel better about Philip. I can admit when Philip is wrong. I can also equally admit when he's right. If you can't do that, you have a major malfunction and you are now worse than he is. I don't need to be liked. I don't need to be embraced. I don't need to be like, oh, we all love what he, if you're doing any of that, and if that's the meaning that you're on this channel for, because I'm, you think I'm towing the line that others are saying, this is a good, this is a good opportunity to just go ahead and unsubscribe. I ain't trying to be nasty, but I don't want to, I don't want to give nobody a false sense that of who I am and, and what I'm not under no circumstances, under no circumstances. Do I require nor need the admiration or the like of a soul? It's great if people agree that to like your product, sure. If people like your content, fantastic. Thank you for that. But if the flattery is just coming because you're under the perception that I'm doing things just like everybody else and I think the way everybody else do, unsubscribe. I'm only interested in the truth and the real ones. When I see stupid ass comments, when I see comments that deserves an ass whooping, when I see comments and you see people that support stupid ass ideas, nothing empowers me more than to see stuff like that because I know what they don't want to hear. They don't want to hear the truth and they don't want to see Philip ever get any praise. If you believe that a man cannot admit when Philip is doing good. I got some, I, I got one, I got, I got, I got a phrase for you. Eat a dick. Plain and simple. Get the hell off my channel. Don't need you. Don't want you. Don't want you even near me to contaminate somebody else with your crazy ass thinking.
I wanted to make this video just to be very clear that when I saw the comment, just understand, I don't take you serious. I will never take you serious. The reason the, you sparked me to make a very clear statement that the fact that you'd agree with that comment and you think that I care about that, eat a dick. That was the most important thing I want to translate over because nothing will stop what I'm doing. Absolutely. The, there's only one thing that will be able to stop me in this world. It's got to be a bullet. Otherwise, I'm coming. And if you think things were bad before, if you're sitting there and you wrote and you got all sensitive and thank me, no, Eric, he just won't be angry with Philip because he's so, uh, if that bothered you, dog, if that got your panties all in a bunch, wait until you see what I got planned and cooking. You really go lose sleep over that one. Do you want to know why the detract community is so beautiful and equally completely harmless to Philip. You want to know why? You want to know why it's effective in pointing out his faults, but ineffective at holding him accountable? Because everybody got money to make off of him. And two, ain't nobody, ain't nobody willing to risk anything. I'm just not willing to be that guy that sits back, relax, and make shit content. I'm just not. Due to criticism and racist comments, Pastor Eric would eventually shut down his comment section. Chill Murray 7 would disavow Pastor Eric and reveal DMs he had with Pastor Eric back when he first called out the tractors. But I legitly try to give him the benefit of the fucking doubt. I really did, bro. You know, where I actually, I'll show you the comment I made on his video. I this is what I said to him. I was like, hey, brother, I wanted to say I personally liked your video this morning. It reminded me to remember that Phil's fans need to be treated with more respect and to not forget why I do what I do. I'm actually interviewing one of his fans that did him dirty. I really appreciate a man of God like you being in the community, a dad to check us young cats that veer off the path. I don't want to destroy Phil. I just want him to get a job and stop scamming innocent people. And I tend to have too much fun talking trash sometimes. Thanks for keeping me accountable, bro. And don't listen to Twitter bullshit. People on here could be weird. You know, or are weird. I don't, yeah, or weird. Because people on Twitter are weird sometimes. Hit me up if you need anything, Pastor. And then he said, thanks, chill. A lot. I knew I'd catch heat for my comment, but for many that are mad at my video, they wanted the trackers to mash out, but the opposite happened. We got closer. So, you know, I kept him with a five foot pole, but I tried to give him the benefit of the doubt, if that makes sense. Because he's trying to like shake up the community and I'm not trying to, but I'm trying to like actually listen to him. So it's like if Snort, like, was like, oh, I'm feeling some, like, any of you motherfuckers. It's like, hey, bro, you're feeling some type of way because of some reason I'm going to listen to you, you know? In the detractor community, it's frowned upon to give Phil any money, even for trolling purposes. But one of Eric's main accusations was that detractors were essentially giving him money by making videos on him. There would be a super chat going by the name of Pastor Eric Miller giving DSP some money. This would lead to duty streams exposing this super chat. All right, people, this is where, again, I have to apologize because Pastor Eric is correct. People are paying Phil. Detractors or so-called detractors are paying Phil. And mind you, here's one right here. So, Pastor Eric, I apologize. You were right. There is a detractor out there paying Phil, and apparently that person is you. In response, Eric would do a live stream called How to Catch a Rat Part 2 with special guest Malcolm X. Malcolm X would not appear in this live stream. I'm here for only one reason. And one reason only, someone has bit the bait. You see, when you want to catch a rat, it's not just enough to put the bait out. No, no, it's not enough just to put the bait out. When you're catching a rat, 
you first have to understand how they got in. Because see, if you catch them and then get rid of them, another one can get in. And then another one. And then another one. And then another one. But if you find out where the hole is, you find out how they got in, and you cut that thing off, now they can't escape. But they said, and I quote, explain to us how you tipped them last night. You, you should have heard the rap thing. You should have heard that. Because I, I heard it. And while, while the whole community of these people were over there celebrating, I'm over here like Birdman. Like, wh who's it going to be? Now, I have my suspicions. You know, I have my suspicions who made up a lie because that's what you do when you want to get rid of somebody. You got to lie on them. You got to lie on them. Nothing else you can do. That's all you can do because you can't get rid of them with the truth because you ain't living in the truth. They have to make up a lie about me. Don't you understand that? Because I'm dangerous now. I'm upsetting the status quo. Why do you think none of them, them bastards have ever confronted me face to face where they, they can see my face and they know my name? They, they ain't done that. I will say it to this way. It's impossible for those copycat guys to meet me on fair ground and Prove to me and prove what I'm saying is a lie about what's happening. The biggest thing, what is one of the biggest things in Sun Tzu's Art of War? And I love that book. I read that book pretty strongly, which, again, if anybody read it, they would see what's going on. Because I'm literally walk, I'm walking through the book, daring somebody to go, hey, I know what you did right there. Great. Finally, you're reading for yourself. You're doing independent thinking. I am literally following a game plan that is public. All you got to do is look because they're doing something that actually has legal ramifications. Identity theft. And worse, misinformation that can lead to more definite or dangerous results. Eric, you, you spent all that money and doing this giving to Philip. Do you know something hilarious? I'll give you a little hint. Do you know I froze everything in my, all of my accounts last week? I pulled money out because I know I was going to need it for this, that, and the third. I did that. I froze it just for that reason. And if, which it didn't happen, but if. It pinged, I will sue the freaking pants off of them. The, again, preemptive thinking, because I know how idiots think. They don't. I know how morons think. They don't. I know how your boyfriends have done Philip. I know how they've lied against Philip, and you don't really need to lie that much because Philip is a liar anyway. But since you don't have content, you got to make up content, which means how are you going to make Philip right about you, dog? Chess. Not checkers, moron. So you think that somehow you're making a difference. I'm just going to say, well, I guess I should pack it up, man, because these guys are just too strong. They're just too damn tough. And man, they just, just beat me up in my comment section. I lost all my subscribers. I, I'm not monetized anymore. I shouldn't attack the bar free. Y'all dumb enough to expect that from me? I'm I'm sorry I didn't attack them further. I'm so, I'm sorry I didn't get to get to swing on them earlier. But there's time for everything. It had to play out this way. They're useless. They can't do anything to harm him, and all they can do is make videos and make money off of him. So if they can't beat him, he joined him. And they brought you along with them. And about 99% of y'all can't even hear what I'm saying because your bar friends are being attacked. You know what a fluffer is? In porn, it's someone who keeps the male actor, you know, ready. 
between scenes and takes. Yo. As they tried to insult me, I ripped them. I'm ripped them up. Every time they insult me, it is so hilarious. I got to chop them down. There's, I, I remember a friend of mine and they still say it. I'm infinitely petty, like 50 cent. I promise you, I am petty as hell. That is still a problem. I don't let go of nothing until I get tired of it. I can insult as long as possible and I never run out of jokes. I can make it as personal as you want. I can make it as silly. I can make you mad if I wanted to. I can have you keep coming back here if I wanted to because you don't know any better. This is chess, not checkers. So unless it entertains me or it serves a purpose, like some of them don't even realize, there's a lot of comments. There's one guy says, man, you didn't answer my comment, and I still ain't. You ain't worth anything. You just go do the same thing everybody else just did over and over and over. You're a low cow over and over and over. You're a, you're a low cow over and over and oh, like Roman Reigns said, it's the same thing. You got no originality, just like yo's daddy. If I need to make it so serious, you have racists in your own community and y'all are okay with it because y'all liked some of the most racist things that people have said about me and y'all liked it. Think about that for a second. Y'all are okay with racists just because you don't like me because I don't like your punk ass boys. I said some things in my comment section that I'm not really proud of. And the more I read the Bible verse, the more I was like, dang, I did do it, man. Which shows you I am still, I ain't no better. If, if I can't own that and stop doing it, you're right. I ain't no better. At least I can recognize my error and own it. You think you guys will give me respect? No, because you're, I respect a man that can admit that he's wrong. That's cool with me. Man, we could be friends. We can be dogs. We can actually, I know now we can talk. You can say, Eric, man, you're wrong. With and I'd listen. And there's been many times I've been corrected. Many, 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 many times. It just so happens in this time, I ain't wrong about them and about y'all. It just so happens in this one area, I can't be wrong. It's impossible. Just as it's impossible for any of your copycat squad to reach me as a man with a name and face and a live recording of us talking, it's impossible. Dude, y'all have been mentally raped. Period. They have spiritually and emotionally raped you. With each passing video, it would appear that Pastor Eric was becoming more and more unhinged by the day. He would forget to turn off the comments and the live stream and people would begin responding. Someone would comment that he has the LTG mentality referencing another locale. Eric would then respond saying they have the mentality of a rapist. Someone would encourage Eric to seek medical intervention as he seemed unhinged in his videos. Eric would say, if you didn't serve a purpose, I would have bumped you. You have a part to play, I will use you until I don't need you anymore. Then I will show you just how much you are worth as a human being. Until then, do your job. After Snoop Hogan's and Duty Stream's videos, his subs would plummet. Someone would congratulate him for hitting 800 subs, saying they were there since they had 1,000 subs. Eric would say that he wanted to lose those subs because they're parasites and this is like a flea bath. Ultimately though, this super chat would be proven to be false. With the help of Piece of Peace, it would be discovered the person who super chatted as Pastor Eric Miller did not link back to his channel. This would lead to Duty Streams receiving criticism as this would not be the first time he had inaccurate information in his videos. Duty Streams would admit his fault in making the video about Pastor Eric's super chat and eventually private the video. With the super chat being debunked, it would seem that Pastor Eric had been proven innocent. But some detractors would dig up an old tweet from November of 2022 where Pastor Eric would say that he did donate to Phil. Even though the super chat had been debunked, it would prove to be a moot point with the revelation of this tweet. Pastor Eric would refuse this as evidence and demand to get additional evidence that he had tipped Phil. He would then claim in one video that he was hacked on Twitter so it couldn't be him. He would then change his narrative to say that it was misinformation that he intentionally put out there to trap detractors. Additionally, he would rarely appear on camera now, only producing videos with one of a few images on screen. You know the thing that's weird too? 
which is one of those facts that I, I, I've been proving this whole time. Ever since this fake evidence that they claim, I, I've given them the benefit of the doubt to say, hey, present that. Every time someone makes a comment, I say, hey, go get the evidence and go get the accuser. Go get the evidence, go get the accuser. Go get the evidence, go get the accuser. Go get the evidence, go get the accuser. They don't text anymore. They're excited that my Twitter is, is been been effed over. I remember when I posted that and asked somebody, hey, what do you think? How do I do that? Flat out. Told Chill that. And because he's trying to, hey, brother, I've been trying to, you know, this is when he was acting normal. I, I tried to reach out to you, man. You ghosted me. I'd never ghost a friend. I wouldn't do that to nobody. It's not okay. Because he pushed a narrative out there and been running with it, making money off those videos. You vote him very much, my bitch, because now he's working for me. I'm putting money in his pocket. How about that for fun? I, how cool is that? I am now paying him to spread misinformation for the sole purpose of confusion. You know how many folks did not buy that? A ton. You know how many people did buy it? This punk ass boy. He thinks, I mean, he really believes in his little, whatever you call that thing that he calls a brain. He really believes he got, I got him. He really believes I have not used him like a bad tampon. All he's been doing is following. That's all he's been doing. He ain't ahead of nothing. He never will be. I've been spreading misinformation like a son of a... For a good while now. Well, maybe... I think right after my last official Bible study, when I was doing them weekly, I think that final one... No, it was after that too. Because I started talking... Because I saw, Oh, no. It started when... Ooh, my memory. It started when I started to put, I started to post more in my my community post. That's where a lot of it came from. But before that, there are like a, several things I would throw out there to see what's 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 weird, what's not, what comes back. What would anybody question me about that? Would anybody go, "Hey, man, that's not cool." Wait a you know how many people just don't say nothing? I'm curious. I I do this all. The, I've been doing this since I started work. When you come up, become a manager, I'll give one information to one dude, another information to this dude, and I want to see, by the time it comes back to me, what does it look like? One of the things never got back to me, and that boy's been my boy for a while now. I told him, he's like, oh, man, I knew that was some that was some shady stuff you said. You know, nobody believed you doing that. They did. But that's how low and disrespectful they look at people. Like, I would tip the very man that I know is committing crime. Why would I do that? That would second guess everything I stand for. Did you think any of that went across his mind? Nope. No. And he's excited about going back to a hacked Twitter, which I actually put the word out, hey, man, how do I do this? My Twitter's compromised. How do I do it? I mean, it, it's amazing, amazing that the more they open their mouth, the more I know they don't read or research. They don't. This is all about today and only today. They're not looking at long term, the reputation long term, ramifications long term. Everything's just short. Whatever I can get the views out with, it's why would you fall for something so obviously bad? Here's the thing that, that people don't even... Uh, that's if he ever shows his face. I'm going to show him one of the greatest, coolest things about uh, his so-called... This I know he donated. I got, I got two receipts. Oh, you do? Oh, you got two receipts? Please bring them. I You see me? I'm sitting here like, please bring them, dog. Bring the evidence. His content would then switch over to criticizing the attractors and he would dub this season two. Season motherfucking two. You heard me. 
You would then make videos talking about how much detractors waste time watching Phil and making videos about Phil. Oh, heavy work week at the bottom and a typical work week at the top. Remember, minus one or three, okay? Phil video, first thing this dude gets up, any of them. This could be any of them, but this is for the main, the, the, the pretendable man. So, Phil video, 8 a.m. Phil video, 10 a.m. Phil video, 12 p.m. Phil video, 2 p.m. Phil video, 3 p.m. Phil video, 4 p.m. Phil video, 7 p.m. Phil video, 8 or 9 or even 11, who knows? And then next week, the same thing. Fill video, 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 fill video. This goes on seven days a week, no days off. How's that feel? What do you think about when? You think about that stuff. When you see that, how does that make you feel? Bad, good, could be great. How does it make you feel that knowing you're spending 56 to 70 hours a day on Philip? On Philip? How the hell is your family? What woman? Dude, what kind of weak will, whack, jelly spine? I don't know any good woman. If there's a woman listening to my voice right now, would you let your husband consume Philip day after day after day after day after day? If you do, to hell with you. You need help. You need Jesus. Pastor Eric would go on homophobic and racist rants, calling Snoop Hogan and Chill Murray house n words and saying that Duty Streams was their master. Notably, out of the three of them, only Chill Murray is black. He would also start inventing nicknames for all of them, such as Duty Streams would become Doo Doo Trickle and Chill Murray would become Dill Pickles. You know, to see the the, the God and, and, and Steven. You know, now I know what Stephen was gonna do. Stephen's a house. Go! The only the, the the only way to help a Stephen is with a bullet in the head. You know your you you know your boys. That's gonna be. I think that's the nicest way I can say their their names without, like, always feeling like I want to spit it spit it out. Like like it's it's like it's in, uh, yeah. We just go call them the pretendables because they're not real detractors. They're just pretendables. So. I mean, this is what doo doo flavor does day in day out. So I know he ain't got no girlfriend. And if he do, he's paying. He's paying for it. He ain't got no job, because if he is, then his job must be lying, which I would not be surprised, but he don't get a promotion. Doo-doo Flavor Trickle did do something that has never been done on his channel before. I damn sure can't say the same thing for Dill Pickles. Screw him and the horse he rode in on him and that ugly-ass horse. It ain't no different than Phil's horse. They both riding around with the same thing. And who's the horse? The audience that they're screwing over and trying to brand as if somehow they have a, the gatekeeper. They ain't no damn. If they're the gatekeeper, I didn't took their head off already. Because I will absolutely, I promise it'll happen. I'll slap the living taste out of his mouth. And he'll do nothing. Because I'm doing it with the facts right now and he's doing nothing. Everybody's so excited over Twitter. And now I'm a, I'm a transgender lover. I love everybody and I have deep roots in it and I'm a Christian and I'm sitting up here being nothing but cool and good. That's like, again, defending the gospel, snot and the rest of them that, that, that love to hate is like defending a rapist. It's like defending a child abuser. That's exactly the equal amount. That's not true child abusers actually have hope there is hope for the rapist they have been men that has that has served their time and have been re rehabilitated and so i'm sorry to say they just happen to be the ones that will never they will continue to rape they'll continue to abuse and they enjoy it that's just it i don't give a damn what deal pickles do he can kiss my ass on diarrhea day he ain't worth a damn 
And yeah, that's just the end of the day. Who gives a crap about him? Like literally, who gives a crap about him? And if they do, I'd love to talk to them and, and explain to them, you are caring about shit. Somebody not worth the black skin that they're in. I'm ashamed that he's black. I truly am. He represents the worst of our race. There's a war that takes place in every ethnic group ever. You got white dudes. You got rednecks. And all everything that goes around that. You got... Your, you got your upper Japanese, and then you have your, like, black Japanese, you know, your the subculture, things of that nature. For us as brothers, Chris Rock said it best. You got black people, and God, and God got to go. They messing up for everybody. A creator going by the name of King Slide would reach out to Eric with a video trying to bridge the gap and settle the situation. What is your end goal in all of this? You can't have, if you can't think you're going to have a career after what you've been doing, there's no way that you could believe, you, you actually believe in your heart and soul that you can continue this YouTube career, lock down comments, not interacting with anybody. It's never going to happen. I'm sorry. I'm sorry to burst your bubble, but it's never going to happen. I'm watching a brother lose his mind day after day alone. And thinks, and what's crazy is he thinks he's winning this. Like he thinks that he's actually uh, uh, winning this argument. He thinks he's destroying the detractor community. He thinks he's winning. This is how delusional he is, but he won't talk to anybody. And I want to offer again that you could come here and talk to me. I will get. I will listen to you. I, I'm not going to sit here hitting buttons, playing memes, all that nonsense. I will have a conversation with you so you can get the story out in front of people. It doesn't even have to be live. We could just talk man to man, privately, publicly, whatever. I just want to understand the, the goal in all this. King Sly and then uh, the tractor going by the name of Prophet Tech would attempt to reach out to Eric with emails. Emails would be the only form of communication Eric could receive as he shut down every other mode of communication. It would seem that Eric would agree to meet up with both of them and Duty in a live stream, so King Sly would go live with Prophet and Duty would be in chat waiting for Eric to show up. But in the end, Eric would no show on them and never appear in the live stream. Instead, Eric would go on a live stream on his own channel, revealing Prophet's email and criticizing it. That all goes back to an email that a brother sent. I'm sure it's it's in, he has good reasons for doing so. And you'll see a lot. I haven't put his name out there because I'm not quite sure if he even wants his name just yet, but I don't think he cares. But I'm going to tell you this much. He definitely he definitely made sure I knew who he was, his face, and I, I, nothing but love and respect. And he came very uh, courteous, very respectful. So the only thing I have clipped from that email is basically the talking points that he was given an example, which I'm pretty sure that's like he, the gauge of the community or might've been personal feelings. I don't know. So listen to this. We can do this on stream or just private between DS and yourself and moderating the debate. First, there is no debate. Let, let's just, let's settle that right quick. I'm, and why am I answering these? Because I am not going to answer these things in any interview if it even happens. These are trivial things to me. I only care about four matters. A name, a face, them two receipts, and the accuser. That's all I care about. After that, then I can address, and there are things that can come after that, because if that door is open, I see the other doors that's open out there too. However, I just start with the first four. Until them first four are met, they ain't nothing to really talk about. If on live stream, I will leave it to you and DS to decide if you want to chat or not. It's not left up to him either. It's left up to me. It works in the four things that I said. Everything else stays it, whatever. But those four criteria must be met. Before anything else comes out, those four criteria need to be met. After that, interview's over. Unless he wants to just run his mouth, 
I'll listen as much as you want, but I ain't got nothing else to say after that. Because now I got to wait for Monday morning, give it to law enforcement, give it to my bank, let them do the work on that, and whatever comes out, comes out. So let's break this down real quick and shut this down. Basically, I want to move forward and end this shit. Negative, Ghost Rider. Shit ain't going to end until them four things are done and the resolution of those bottom two. After that, I go to stay, what, what we have, uh, phase five. That's it. And I go to phase five. And don't think that I that all them de detractor channels that side with him that made the meme videos, don't think I let that go. Remember, I told you, I I'm really petty. I'm infinitely petty. I got to admit, that's a sin. People made them jokes all the time. Eric, you're like 50, man. You're just infinitely petty. I'm like, that's, yeah, dog, you're right. But let's go back to it. So toxic bullshit. I, I can I can I can truly tell you I am not toxic. I make comedic videos to spark and cause a reaction. I we all call that trolling. I've never lied about that. I said I'm a troll. I don't necessarily dislike trolls. I think trolls are natural. I think they're like bullies. You need them. They will teach you a lot about courage, uh, resolve. And they will help your wit get sharp. Now, degenerates is a different story. Those aren't trolls. Those are just evil bastards. That's all that is. Season two is the destruction of what I built from season one. That's why doesn't matter subs, members, views, all of that can burn to dirt because whatever's left is the truth. After season one, when I realized they started getting about the money, I cut that thing. I cut him and that thing off. I'm proving it ain't about the money. Absolutely. I can't say the same for them, brothers. When you two bring is chaos and hate between detractors. Absolutely. That was the point. Setting up camps for people to pick sides. Yes, absolute. Imagine when I told you that I moved the needle and y'all thought I was kidding. When he didn't take me serious and think it could become the where we're sitting at today. When I, when, when before I stopped the comments and watch out, oh, he ain't nothing. He ain't gonna be able to do nothing. Are you listening now? Prophet had offered two sets of talking points for this live stream interview, one set for Eric and one set for Duty. Eric would feel that the talking points for Duty were based in facts. Notice all of his have what one thing, well, they have like two things in common, right? Lies, not owning lies, being duplicious, being a bastard, being a heathen, being corrupt. Notice they all are around the same thing. Why are you lying all the time? Why do you not speak facts? Why do you preach hate? I ain't preached none of that. I ain't said, I ain't said none of my people nowhere. There's no need. I don't repay evil with evil. That's the point. I have never and never will weaponize anybody. There's no point. I can do it my damn self. But Eric would feel that his talking points were personal attacks and would avoid addressing some of them. Why do you feel necessary to attack other detractor channels because yours is failing? <laughs> Also, this is not that bad. The last thing you want to file at DSP, how do you think that's going? It won't end well. Uh, why do you feel it's your responsibility to gatekeep other channels on what they should and shouldn't show or should report on? <laughs> you see these, these, you see how these, these attacks are like, why are you making us be moral? That, that's, that's the, that should be basically what he's saying. Have I told you what you can't report on, Phil? No. Have I told anybody you bet not point this on, Phil? No. Have I told y'all, hey, man, make better content? Yes. Why would that not be? Why is that bad? First of all, are you telling, so let's look at it from the flip side. Are you telling me any other content next to Philip is dog shit? I have to ask this next question. 
what reality are you in? Talk about you hate divorce, but you are not divorced for cheating on your wife, ex-wife. Yeah, because I'm not giving her a divorce. That's what Christians do. We don't divorce. Why, why is that relevant to catch an old liar? None. Just pick it at me. So I'm, my wife's supposed to leave me because I, I, I fucked up, huh? Because that's what? What normal people do? No, that's not just isolated to Christianity, my friend. There's a lot of families that have stayed together because of infidelities and far worse. Well, yeah, I mean, really far worse, like murder and things like that. But how is this even a question? You hate, God hates divorce. Yeah, God hates divorce. So if I hate it, it's because he hates it. And it's not right. It's not cool. It's not okay. It's not justifiable. Do you realize there's no justification for getting a divorce in the Bible at all? That's, he wants you to take marriage seriously because you're getting into a covenant with God that doesn't break. So imagine, imagine Eric practicing what he's preaching. You're not actually a pastor. <laughs> You're not actually a pastor, but have used it as a smoke screen to make money and weaponize your so-called family. Weaponize who? I ain't sent nobody to do nothing. And let me tell you, there are a few that wanted to do a lot more than I, I was like, you ain't doing that on my name. And no, you are not. Trust me. Things could have gotten real messy and sloppy and bad fast. But I don't work that way. That's not who I am anymore. So behind me, y'all probably can see it. You see that? Whoops. You see that? See that? Uh, see that right there? That's my certificate. That's January 11th, 2013. That's when I was ordained. Uh, I was under, I was given the, I was given the call under, well, affirmed my call in Denver, Colorado. I got a second confirmation when I was with, in New Braunfels, Texas, and got prayed over. Some people, I'm, I'll have to show you that picture. It's really nice. They prayed over me. The, the Southern Baptist prayed over me. And then I finally did my, my first sermon ever, of course, the same day that I was ordained. Your criminal background has come up with some shocking revelations. Care to comment? I'm free and saved. There it is right there. Boom. Done. One of those beautiful things about being a Christian. You find something that I've done dirty bring it to my attention so I can repent from it and show you that it doesn't have any hold over me and I'm going to give it to the one person who can clean it. God says, I forgive all sins. He didn't say some. So if there's a, now look, here's the truth. I've already been forgiven for everything. You find something dirty, Jesus covered that with the blood already. You bring it to my attention, all I'm going to do is publicly put it out. But notice my talking points our personal attacks, his were factual attacks. Now, he's just giving me an example, but do you see the difference? I want you to understand this is a clear path of distinction that of two camps in the detractor community. You got my camp here that want to know where all the lies are coming from. Why ain't you doing this? This is my camp the one that wants to hold somebody accountable. And that's his camp. Smear campaign, try to smear, try to get people to think, I, well, I'm something that I'm not, try to get people to think about me as a terrible person. Notice these are all personal attacks. These, factual. Those are the two camps that we're dealing with. So you're, you're Snort Hogan, you're, you're Ch Chio Murray, you're Aqua, Aqua Teal, they're in this camp. Screw Eric. Fuck Eric. Eric sucks. He's garbage. Blah, 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 blah. Why? Because Eric said all these things. I love you. I don't care what you think about me. You matter to me. This community is still a beautiful place to live. I have been, I've shown nothing but love towards y'all. I have never steered you wrong. I've never lied to you. I never will lie to you. I've never wanted nothing but the best. Y'all can test me on that. Can't say this. 
for my my uh, my other brothers over there. I can't say that. Eric would justify tuning off comments because he wanted to protect people trying to defend him and stop himself from sinning. If I turn if I turn my comment sections back on now, let me be honest with you and tell you a lot of a lot of the, the strongest reason of not turning my content back on. There's two. So people that try to defend me don't get hit, even though something tells me. Well, from what I'm learning, they, some don't even care. They're just fighting back, um, which, again, I don't think that's a good idea. I think you should let me handle that. I thank you, but just pray. That'll do way more. Wish me well. That'll do, that'll do more. But people go do what they want, and that's fine. But I ain't tell nobody to do nothing, and I never will. Because uh, when it comes down to it, I need to be responsible for me. If it, somebody messes up on my name, it's bad. I'd rather get in trouble than them. And the other... It will keep me from sinning. Because let me tell you, and I, I think I've said this before, I love terrorizing trolls. I do. I think it is the funniest and the greatest side hobby in the universe. The nastier they get, the funnier it gets. And it gets me in there and makes me start saying things that aren't okay. Remember you told that dude he should have died and, and Planned Parenthood failed? Yeah, man, I was, ooh, that was low. It's a good one, but it was low. Remember when you said that dude's parents should be shot in the head? I did say that, didn't I? Yeah, that was low. But why, why keep running down that road when I can cut myself off and know my limits and just be done? So just understand that, is really why that is a big issue, why it's not on. It has, do I care what people think about me? I just like it to think about me. But, I mean, how do you not, not think about me? I'm pretty cool. Eric would say his doctor commented on his beard and would contribute his beard growth to the fact that he's now asserted his dominance. When all this started, like, my beard, like, my mane has grown. And uh, my doctor made a point, he goes, man, what have you been doing? Like the week before that, it wasn't that big. And I'm like, man, you know, when you start really blasting your voice out there and, 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 and stepping your man game up, man, your mane will grow. I am telling you, it's growing like crazy. I couldn't, it's, it's nuts. So I just want to share that with you. So if y'all want to ever grow your mane like lions do, you know, when lions, uh, when they beat or become dominant over over the over someone else will beat them or become the man or the, or the pride or whatever, his mane grows. Like it changes color and it grows. I'm like, look at me. So I'm protecting y'all. I'm trying because y'all are worth it. In response to Eric revealing Prophet's email, King Slide would reveal his own conversation with Pastor Eric. I tried. This guy is gonna sit here and make himself out like he <sighs> is still winning. Try to get, you know, try to talk to him, talk some sense in the dude, and nothing worked. Nothing at all worked with this guy. And uh, yesterday, which I'm going to show, I'm going to show, because he went live today, and decided to just dump things that me and Profit, shout out to you, agreed not to drop, and he went and dropped them. Didn't care. And I think you would benefit in a conversation with someone who will give you a fair shake and not just sit there and meme all day. I would like to speak with you on live or off stream just so I know your stance, so your stance is out there because it's not very clear to me, and I'm sure others what uh, others have the same problem as what I'm about to say. I, I, I messed up. I hope you would consider speaking with me. We all are in, a com in this community because of a guy who criticizes people behind a camera but never sits down and talks. I have no issue with an interview. Not sure what other, all the other stuff a fair shake means, which I don't know how you don't know what a fair shake means. What are you talking about? But whatever. My videos are very clear and don't mince words. Why are you interested in an interview? First of all, your videos aren't very clear and you spin around the point and, and then spin away from it. You don't really answer. And it, it's all over. It's spread all over in a bunch of videos that no one's really watching. So no, it's not. Then he goes, what exactly is your goal? 
being as honest and upfront with these two questions will determine my yes or no. Agreed? This was like strike one with me. I'm going to be honest. I don't like this part. This be as honest and upfront with these two questions will determine my yes or no. Agreed? I don't like that. I'm going to be, I, I really don't like that. That looks to me as you think you're something that I need. In my head, that's what I'm seeing. I'm seeing that you think that I need you for my channel to grow. I feel like a one-on-one -on -one conversation is a lot different than a video. Yes, you do state how you feel and your gripes with the community on your own, but I feel like speaking to someone who isn't going to crack jokes and make memes all day and actually listen to what you have to say and have all your issues with the community in one concise video would be better than all others, uh, all of your thoughts being spread out in 15 videos. Like I said earlier, it's spread all crazy. That could help in shifting the public's opinion about you as well. I offer because I wasn't seeing your side represented in the community, and it seems everyone is dogpiling you, and instead of jumping in, this is when I'm like, this is strike two for me, okay? Um, see, my story, I'll tell you something. You made a video on me I just saw. Awesome, thanks. Telling the community that duty is a liar, all-around fraud, those are the facts. Snort Hogan and Chill, them two house dog firm, they don't care. He lies, spreads false information on Phil, then lied on me. Duty has tried everything to get me off his ass, but he messed up. My, sim my story is simple. Uh, Duty confessed he lied about me with the two receipts and the accuser to or product. or I think he meant produce, but he said product. The two receipts and the accuser. Uh, videos I make are to apply pressure and be up front. My gripe, not to cyberbully a man. That's a gripe. I spoke with a six-year-old's parent who tried to kill themselves because of cyberbullying. Cap, no one is holding Phil accountable by making videos. No one cares. Uh, and the new modern detractors are just using him for clout. And that's just a fact. My opinion, no, I don't think they're skilled and talented enough to do that. Lastly, I don't know if I want to tell my story. The back pedal starts of my story. The dog piling is irrelevant. Uh, dogpiling is normal. This is all happening, happening as planned and expected. He was, he has been running like Phil. That challenge has been there since all this started. It is who he, um, it is he who runs and ducks because of my demands face to face, his name, those two receipts and the accuser who got them. He has done everything but agree and step up like a man. Duty shows up. Duty shows up to the stream and sits there and kicks it in the stream waiting for him. He agreed to talk to him. He agreed to his terms. Do you want to come and talk right now? I have duty. Link them. He answers this one. Completely skipping this one. Absolutely. Just understand those demands I have are non-negotiable. Yeah, okay. All right. I go. He sends me an email and says, no discord. My demands are not negotiable. So I'm like, what are you talking about? No discord. How else are we going to be there to talk on stream live on YouTube? Duty was there for the uh, entire length of my stream waiting for you. He agreed live to your terms like he just did now and waited for you and you didn't show. Not only did you not show, you responded to a previous email and completely skipped over the invite to join the call to speak on YouTube. You can no longer say he's afraid. So I hope, since you are an honest pastor, you will add in your videos from now on, duty agreed to my terms, showed up to have a conversation and waited for me to show, and I, even though I glad, or, um, and I didn't, even though I gladly said I would show up. You cannot say he's afraid and hiding. All the players were there except you. Wait, hold up. I asked you when you wanted to do this and never got an answer. Uh, two, who do you think you speaking to? A kid? You just think because I'm an email and evil bullshit on YouTube overrides my Sabbath day with my family. Right. Yeah, the family you cheated on, but whatever. Uh, yeah, that, a lot of love there. Um, my demands are non-negotiable. His demands were what we just read about duty. He agreed to him. So that 
I don't know why I keep saying that. If they don't work for you, then it just doesn't work. I had him here. He agreed to the terms. You did not show up. Discord is crap. I've been in them before doing interviews that when I won the argument, the video was deleted and there was no record I was there. Uh, it was going to be live, bro. So even if the call dropped, it would have been live. Everyone would have been here. What are you talking about, bro? The whole conversation was live. I said in the email, yes, talk on Discord. Doesn't mean it won't be live. What are we talking about here? Like, what are you, a moron? If these things don't work for you, great, I get it. They aren't supposed to work for you. Oh, they are to work for me. That is why they are my demands. Eric would then make a video saying no peace interviews and that his demands must be met. But I, I neglected one of my email accounts and I popped it up to see a lot of people want to do interviews. The pervasive uh, question in that is, hey, maybe we can sit you guys down. Maybe we can get you guys to talk and y'all can squash it. Let me be very, very, very clear. I will not quash it. I will not yield. I will not compromise. I will not back up. I won't do a ceasefire. I won't call a truce. It is not going to happen. I guarantee you. There's four criterias. And those four only can stop all of this. It is it. It is the only four things that exist. Name of that brother. Face of that brother. The two receipts and the accuser. That's it. That's the only questions I'm concerned about. That's the only questions I plan on ever answering. There are no extras I will consider on anything else because it's about the truth versus a liar. This is not, well, you're tearing the community apart. No, he's tearing the community apart. Because y'all are protecting a liar and y'all are expecting for somehow to be just roll over and be cool with that. If you're going to be a community that's trying to hold Phil accountable, you can't be a hypocrite. This dude could have stopped all of this weeks ago by producing two out of the four. I know the first two is real struggling with him because he's a coward. I get that. And I was willing to concede to just those two. Now there is no concession. It's going to be them four or nothing at all. That's, that's what we're sitting. Or if God tells me to stand down. That's it. That's the only, he is the only one that can change this outcome of where we're going. Any interview that wants to be made, you can you can talk to your blue in the face. The only thing I'm concerned about is those four things. If those four things ain't addressed, I ain't interested. There are mean videos made about me. I don't give a damn. That's what children do. I, I wouldn't expect anything less. I tell you what they can't make a video about, being honest and telling the truth. Now that video will never get made. Um, I'm aware that there are talking points for both sides. That's great. I mean, I, I'm not interested. I'm only interested in dealing the truth, to be quite honest. So, um, and I, I was just forgot to tell that brother was telling me, he goes, man, I wanted to hear your side of the story. And I'm really struggling with that because I'm like, I don't need anybody to understand my side of the story. They can look at the videos or not. I mean, I don't expect people who don't have morals to really watch the videos. I don't expect that. People who do have morals, I do expect them to watch that. But I, I decided because he seemed forthright. So I was like, you know what? If he can... If he can get that coward to come down here and them four things in place, make it happen. That That is the only thing I'm concerned with. He, he, was, he told me, he's like, hey, man, I just feel like people are dogpiling on you and there's nobody on your side. And I'm like, I, they can dogpile as much as they want. It changes the same thing as they're doing against Philip. Nothing. It accomplishes nothing. They don't mean anything to me. They never will. They, none of them, none of them have approached me as a man yet. So they are inconsequential, irrelevant, and I don't acknowledge them. That's why they can make all the mean videos they want. All of it is just like their channels. Shit. 
the best thing in them videos is me. Eric would then make another video about King Sly and his emails. I just want to give you a fair shake. My videos give me a fair shake. The only way my videos can be interpreted is I'm being very hostile toward these fake ass detractors because they're supporting a liar. I don't have anything else in there. That's it. I put a little bit of comedy in because it's funny, but let's look. No, dog. This is what it's about. How do I need a fair shake when that video is shaking as it wants to? They're choosing to run away like bitches. And me, we're going to mean video. That, we're going to make mean videos. Eric is so mean to me. I treat you like a child because that's what you are. Will you be joining us? I still have duty here and he's waiting. Fuck him. No, sir. It won't be in Discord. YouTube is just fine. With the following needs, his face to be seen. He, none of this was confirmed, by the way. And I, until I get a confirmation, I ain't moving. And I ain't going to no damn Discord. I made that mistake before when dealing with reformed theologists and, and, and debating against some of their, their big guns. And you can't find that shit anywhere. And that's not cool. So I learned my lesson with that one. What are you talking about, no Discord? How else are we going to do there? do there to talk and stream it live on YouTube. You don't know how to use streaming services, sir? Okay. Dude was there for the entire length of my stream waiting for you. Fuck him. He ain't, notice he ain't waiting for me over here. He didn't come say, Eric, man, can we talk? Can we handle this together, men to men? And then we film that. Well, actually, we can do it behind the scenes. But if you want to put that on, on live, that's fine. If he comes to me as a man, I'll take it. But there ain't gonna be no moderator. There is no need. I ain't got really that much to say anyway, besides bring me the receipts. That's all I'm asking for. And the person's name. That's the two things I'm asking for. One of the main demands Eric has is that Duty Streams has to reveal his identity. As to why he wanted this information, he would explain in a video that he wanted to dox Duty. Back to. Uh, uh, what if he does what if he shows you his face his name man and you give it all out oh i'm gonna tell you right now his face is going out i guarantee it i'll give i'll give i'll give him this much if he ever tried to be a man which is impossible just like him telling the truth impossible if he ever does it if i had one more lie nah i ain't gonna do that to him i'm just gonna put his face out because people need to see him because of their involvement, King Sly and Prophet would both gain nicknames. King Sly would become King Sloppy, and Prophet would become Prostitute Gaming. That's why Philip don't take them serious. Because they have the narrative of Philip. They don't have him confirming a damn thing. And until you get his confirmation, all you got is conjecture and an opinion. And it's one-sided at that because he ain't talking to you. You see what I'm saying? That's where you get the doofuses, the snorts, and the and, and the the and teeth and uh what sloppy sloppy king, queen of the sloppy whatever, and then you got prostitute games. You got and you got the rest of them. This is just all a sham, brothers and sisters, a damn scam to keep them employed. Potentially due to the lack of support he was receiving from the detractor community, he would go on Reddit to find a six-month-old post criticizing these detractors. And we got to say that Reddit thinks he's awesome. If you are shit on Reddit, you ain't nobody. And I just proved that I'm actually awesome on Reddit. And I stopped. That should tell you something. I ain't even been around that long and I got a better reputation than this dude. His videos would devolve into long rants with single images on the screen. He would also throw in random clips from TV shows and movies, Samantha insulting detractors, and men dancing. Did this fetish Phil fan mention me on his lying channel? I don't look like your sugar daddy, Phil. I guess... This is the first time you talked about a girl that didn't run away screaming or that you didn't pay for. Do us all a favor, fetish boy. Take up the pastor's challenge and quit ducking and running from him. Oh, and the thumbnails. Top-notch dog. That is sarcasm, by the way. Pastor, please roast this boy.
You will dedicate one section of a video to men twerking and saying that these are the detractors. As to why he had all these videos of men twerking, it's unknown. He would justify all his actions by saying that Christ has forgiven him. But you were washed and you were sanctified. You were justified in the name of, Lord, of the Lord Jesus Christ by the spirit of our God. Do you realize I ain't guilty of a damn thing? been justified because I live in Christ's perfect 33 years of life. It covers the entirety of my life. His 33 years covers me. Pastor Eric's title would be called into question due to his behavior and his dubious past. Due to this, the tractors would begin calling him Pasta Eric. Pasta Eric would eventually become Pasta Derek. Derek is an infamous DSP fan that the tractors mock. Derek would appear to have an addiction to adult content. Due to the similarity of their names and their shared interest in adult content, Pasta Eric would become Pasta Derek. With this new name, he would essentially submit himself as a lol cow. Pasta Derek would not like this name and then say, Duty Streams is 10 times Derek. Um, what's up with the, uh, what's up with the, 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 the name there, bud? Because see, that's what they do when they try to replace a name when it's someone that they think that is worse. So he's Derek. Derek is whoever. The hell, I don't even know anything about that dude. But whoever he is, let's be clear about this. Doodoo toilet water is Derek times 10. The word dog in itself would become a meme because of Eric's habit of punctuating his sentences with it. Because I never asked or needed you, dog. You don't matter or factor in any of this, dog. Keep your stupid ass out the middle of this, dog. Due to Eric's homophobia and him referencing the detractors as boyfriends, detractors would refer to each other as boyfriends as a way to mock him. As the memes surrounding Eric would continue to grow, a detractor would create a song for him. Lost all my subscribers. I, I'm not monetized anymore. I shouldn't have tagged the bar free. I need my boyfriend. I know pray when I see it. I've been a predator all my damn life. The Tractors would host a funeral for Eric's channel and they would wear the same ski mask Samantha would wear. In response to this, he would have his own funeral video mocking the Tractors. In this video, he would just be talking over loud organ music. But everybody gathered here today sees this nice brown mahogany casket in front. Now, to answer that question, Snoop Pennell is one of the largest detractor channels, and at some point, Eric would claim he received an email from this channel. Snoop Bunnell isn't known for interacting in the detractor community at all. Based on Snoop Bunnell's lack of interest in the community and the email itself, it seemed unlikely that it was a real email and it was just bait for Pastor. He would believe the email was real and insult them. You, you got it, bro. All right, so, so we got Booger over here that is really upset and he's he's upset because I, I created this vortex of fucking facts but since it's messing with y'all's meal ticket i'm the bad guy that's fair also kiwi's farm has dozed your uh address phone number employee and criminal record wow did you really just say that though in one of my email and let's hear let's hear listen to, listen to this we get to go some more. Again, keep my name and my channel out of your fucking mouth. Snort Bunnell, your channel sucks. You make shit content. You don't edit shit. You don't do shit. And you ain't reported shit worth shit. You'll receive another email from Piece of Peace insulting him, and he would also react to this. Personally speaking, uh, I don't have nothing against him, to be quite honest with you. I really don't. I don't. I actually gave him a compliment to him. He's probably one of the smartest people in the community. But, you know... When you're as dangerous as I am, because let's be honest, anything that, any criticism that is given to a detractor, any criticism that is given to a detractor is automatically bad. God bless him, put together that amazing sheet of tracking Philip for whatever reason that is therefore 
I don't know. Um, I know somebody said, well, it, because people come by and see the, how much is still spending, they're not going to give him money. Clearly, that has not happened because they are still giving that dude money. But, you know, who am I to say anything other than just my opinion? It's a waste of time because he will continue to make money. And for every person doesn't go by there, it's probably 10 or 20 or even more if they even know that, you know, he exists. Not because I think Pizza Pizza is a terrible content creator, but if you don't know who to look for and Philip ain't talking about you, ain't nobody going to know. So that people are like, Eric, that's kind of, I mean, you're not a gatekeeper. I'm not. You can take whatever I say literal or not. You can believe what I'm telling you or not. You can take it or not take it. You can shove it, twist it, turn it. I mean, I'm trying to tell you to do that, but I don't really care. I'm just going to tell you by, if you're going to be a detractor, you need to make sure that you are not doing the very things that would cause someone to not want to listen to you. In order to be an effective detractor, well, let's let's be straight honest what the word really means. The word really means you're going to be a good critic, okay? If you're going to be a good critic, one of the best things you can learn as a critic is that people... You got to make it to where people would be willing to listen to you, whether they like you or not. Pizza Pizza himself would confirm that this is not an email from him. Eric would receive random emails from users either insulting him or defending the detractors. And one livestream, Chill Murray would reveal that he, Duty, and some others were behind at least some of the emails being sent to Pastor Eric. I'm just chilling. I'm sitting here. My feet are kicked back while he reads emails, fake emails that we wrote. Dog. Really think about that. And he really thinks they're real emails. You know, I have to, like, like, come on. Emails I've written. Duty, all the boys, bro, all the boyfriends, we've all pretty much been di directing his channel. A Kiwi from Caesar would attempt to reach out to Eric and question why did he lie about donating to Phil. Eric would be offended that he was being questioned and he would respond with a long rant. Eric would once again state that he didn't do it and it was misinformation. But Eric would then begin questioning the Kiwi from Caesar about Merle's. Kiwi Frames user would attempt to reason with Eric, but Eric would be unreasonable and cut off communications. Eric would announce that he's the last and true detractor and claim the title of Gatekeeper. He had been referring to the main group of detractors as the Pretendables as a reference to the Avengers. Due to this, he would say that he's Thanos and even roleplay as Thanos in some of his community posts. The next big milestone for Eric's channel would be 666, the Mark of the Beast in the Bible. Detractors would mock his channel when this happened. He would receive emails from detractors and make a video immediately downplaying the importance of this number. I ain't distracted by nothing. And nobody. So this is what they're doing right now. Trying to find some way to succeed when nothing you choose is likely to work. Everything they've chosen up to this point hasn't worked. Trying to find a reason to feel hopeful in a bad situation. That's them. Ooh, your, your channel is 666. Oh, you want to talk about the Bible now? And you think that number somehow symbolizes... Do you know 666 happens a lot more in society than you're aware of, you, you idiots? Do you realize uh, that dude was... He t he's still trying to comment on your stuff. And I'm like, right, look, they, anybody can comment all they want. I, the chat section, I don't really care. I don't, again, I don't care. You Y'all can go in there and enjoy it. Do as much as you see fit. Who cares? I'm never going to go in there anyway until next year. So I wouldn't know. But they made a big deal about the 666. Ooh, you're losing subscribers. That's the point. Good job there. Here's your Here's your popsicle. You, you you good now? You you cool? You need another diaper? We can I can change you. Lord knows your parents didn't do it. I can do it for you. Prophet would then release his own video exposing Eric. Prophet would reach out to various organizations to discover that Pastor Eric was really not a pastor and was most likely not ordained. Somebody in his so-called family congregation had contacted me, and I asked about this right that you know. 
he was stated that he was ordained in the Savannah Baptist Church in Denver, Colorado. We'll get into that. As you can see, the Savannah Baptist Church never existed in Colorado. The only one I could find was in Oklahoma. And again, we'll look into that later on. Week, I believe. Dear Gerald, I work at the Texas Baptist Historical Collection, a ministry of the BGCT. The BGCT main office sent over your request for information about Pastor Eric L. Miller and the powers of Words and Wisdom Baptist Church. I have searched our archives and have found no information on Pastor Miller's ordination or the existence of the powers of Words and Wisdom Baptist Church within Texas. I would be happy to look into our archives to see if I can locate the information through a national search for the information you requested. There are several research requests before, but I will try to get your information in the next three to four weeks. Blessings. I got this. Dear Gerald, I just searched through our archives to see if I could find anything about Pastor Eric L. Miller or the powers of Words of Wisdom Baptist Church. Unfortunately, I was not able to find any information on either Pastor Miller or the church. They then asked me if he was registered with the BGCT or the Golden Triangle Baptist Association. You need to be a member of one of the two. Okay, if you're going to be a Baptist minister within the United States. They are now doing a international search, and I am in contact with the Golden Triangle Baptist Association. I have also tried to pull records on permits for the church within Texas and in Colorado. Again, all this is publicly available. There is nothing. It would also reveal the various threats that he's been sending to duty streams behind the scenes. Shortly after this video, Eric would begin winding down season two, saying he's taking a victory lap. He would also announce that he is now running a thumbnail business. The Trexus would harbor doubts about his thumbnails due to his unique style of thumbnail. He would then make a season end video on February 27th, winding down season two. In this video, he would dub over a scene from the movie Friday. In this clip, you will see what takes place after some of the super soft, too sugary crew came to claim their manhood back from Eric. This dramatic portrayal based on true events is toned down so it can be shown on YouTube without an R rating. So now let's watch the punch that destroyed the fake detractors community. Who the hell is this? Who the hell's pulling us upside my damn yard and I'm over here chilling? with my integrity, mor morals, and manhood. Hey, Eric. Hold up, man. L let me go see what this is. Who the... Hey, it's me, the Pretendables. Oh, here we go. What does this need Dog. want? Uh, y'all behind me, right? He think all his boys go help him? Bitch! Man, y'all go help, right? Ooh! Hey man, look, I just want my manhood back man if you don't mind. I mean, you know I'm not trying to trip. What what manhood? What manhood? That manhood that I used before you came and jacked all of us, homie. Oh, that manhood. You want that back. I understand. I get it. Thanks, man. You know, it's kind of like, you know, I, I can give it back to you. I just want to use it in content creation sometime. Bitch! Oh, I got your manhood, punk! In this same video, he would also deny evolution. Versus the creation of the world, his invisible attributes all around, all of nature, things of nature, his eternal power and divine nature have been clearly seen, being understood through his workmanship, all his creation, the wonderful things that he has made, so that they who fail to believe and trust in him are without excuse and without defense. That's why you hear people like, oh, we, we, we come from monkeys. No, you don't. The, c come on, bro. Like, for real? Seriously. That that don't even make any sense. That's why it's called a theory of evolution. Theory, dog. Didn't say the fact. Said the theory. <laughs> but, you know, look at the perfect human body. Yeah, look at it. It does things that you can't do. Like, you cannot do all the processes that are built in that it does automatically. Why? We're too evil to think about. Hey, we got to remember to breathe. Your body does. It doesn't forget that. Oh, that, uh, that's evolution. Okay, bro. I, I got you. In the end, the video itself would not be unique, as it would cover many of the same points he's made in the last two months of videos. He would then release another season finale video later that day, but most of this video would end up being a clip show of various DSP clips. 
Despite saying he was done with Season 2, he would make another episode of Season 2 insulting the Decepticon due to the documentary about him. Duran itself would contain many of the same points that he has previously made. Ultimately, if this is the end of Pastor Eric Miller, it's unknown. We will have to wait and see until he releases Season 30. As always, thank you for watching and consider subscribing to the channel. And thank you to all the members supporting this channel and a special thanks to Francisco Ramos Mejia. Damn. Dog. Laying on your back, spreading your leg. Dog. I know, pray when I see it. Dang. Dog. I've been a predator all my damn life. And doo doo flavors clothing. <laughs>